Hello. Hello. And welcome to the Saturday Night Quarantine. I'm John Lee Roberts and this is... The Saturday Night Quarantine. <laughs> I'm Jason Long, Long and this is... The Saturday Night Quarantine. And I'm John Lee Roberts and this is... The Saturday Night Quarantine. I'm Josie Long and this is... The next half hour. <laughs> <laughs> like this um it's lovely to be with you all we can't see you um uh, how are you Josie how's your week been um Joe <laughs> it's been absolutely fascinating <laughs> it's uh, it's up and down isn't it it's yeah. very up and down it's amazing how much you know a what? little it is what it is oh lovely oh you know what this has given rise to too many people saying gnomic things Gnomic. Gnomic. Like a like a pithy thing. Oh, I thought it was anti-Irish, thank God. Yeah, but I thought that was very rude. Gnomic. <laughs> like, is he what they used to stick on the side of pubs? No mix. Yeah. G N. There's a there's a G in that. You should have felt it in my pronunciation. Gnomic. If it was like gnocchi. So if same things like gnocchi does. Gnocchi. <laughs> I'm just saying. If I, I see anything else motivational, I shall feel so aggressively demotivated as to deliberately ruin some of my past works. So in order to motivate you, we need to be demotivational. Mm. Mm, Josie yes. Long, just give up. Oh, well, no, that's that's too too common a, a, a <laughs> response to my work, actually. <laughs> that's something in between. Such a note. Um, we're also joined by the house band, uh, Johnny the Baptist. Good evening, Johnny, and hey. yeah, hello. But I've come, up, I've come up with a name for you. Husband, house band. <laughs> we're house bound. Your husband, and we're and we're both husbands to a murdered son. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like you know, like in Gladiator. Every, yeah, I can I say it. almost every day with the baby? Yeah. I say my name is Mrs. Baby. Baby to a murdered baby. <laughs> baby to a... <laughs> so that's what's you know, in my head, it turns out. Like 26 or something, and she says, Mum, did you used to I just have this weird memory? Did you... <laughs> <laughs> baby to a murdered baby, Mum. Did you feel quite like say... No, I'll deny it the way my mum does all of the, all of the uh, intri intrigue from my childhood. <laughs> and... Blame it on Uncle Paddy and Uncle Luke. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I won't need to worry. It will be one of the many things her new stepfather, Richard, can deal with. Uh, <laughs> well, that, I'll be dead. You saying the new is that's pretty optimistic because that I said 26 years in the future. So that's, that's good, Johnny. Uh, I will still have it by that point. Have it by that point. There might have been a couple of husbands in between then. Yeah, yeah. I, I will still have got it, is what I'm trying yeah. to say. At that time. Oh, you'll still, like, have... I'll still... Zoom. Yeah, uh, exactly. I'll Zaza still, blue. Exactly, I'll still got it. For <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, very I'm, much. You've got a... Um, You've got a new theme tune for that's us. Coming up, I, that's yeah. coming up. I, it's very exciting. Oh, you play for us. I haven't even asked her how his week's been. Well, how's your week, how his week's how's, it, <laughs> I'll do the hosting here, Paddy. How's your week, Luke? Uh, it's all right. I'm, I'm still ill. It's And I keep thinking I've got better. And then suddenly, like two hours later, I'm absolutely shattered again. And I have to have a nap for like three hours. It's Stay it's indoors. I'm, I'm so... okay at the moment, but that's because of Doctor Theatre. Look, Mummy Pig here. Have you tried jumping up and down in a muddy puddle, and then for no reason, literally everyone in the scene lying on their backs and laughing, even though what has just happened is not laugh out loud funny. Have you tried that? Um, well, you see, at the moment, Mrs. Pig, there's rules that I mean if I go outside, I can't go outside to jump in a muddy puddle. I've got to go outside to exercise or to go and collect some food. Oh, this doesn't seem realistic at all. Can, oh. I tell you Can I tell you something? I voted for Rebecca Long Bailey, but my husband voted for Keir Starmer. And if you know anything about Peppa Pig, you'll know that what I've said is completely accurate. Goodbye. I don't want people to think that Josie was suggesting they voted for Keir Starmer in case that's right. I just want it to be No, clear. it was Daddy Pig. I, Who may I add? I voted for Corbyn again. again did you do a writing? I voted for La Guillotine. 
Uh, but sadly, I misspelled it and s- split the guillotine vote. <laughs> uh, I, I ended up apparently voting for La Guillotin, uh, who actually satire. does not share my politics. Do you not think satire is right for this show? <laughs> no, I'm just satire I'm, or just agitprop. Um. <laughs> I'm agitated. <laughs> prop. Um, <laughs> <so> <laughs> you, <laughs> yes. Well, should we... Um, should we... Should we should we play the new theme tune? Is everyone so busy? Um, before we start, I want to explain something about the theme tune. Um, pa- Paddy and I realised that it was a... Uh, oh, it's a, a, a damn bee in the room. <laughs> Paddy and I realised that it was about time the show had a theme tune. And normally the way we work uh, when not quarantined apart is that one of us writes the words and the other writes the music. And we chop and change. Sometimes I write the words, sometimes Paddy writes the words. Uh, uh, sometimes I write the music, you get the picture. The point is, in this instance, I wrote the words and Paddy wrote the music. Uh, but unfortunately, I actually had to send him a recording, of, because of time constraints, a recording of me singing the words before he'd written the music. So <laughs> I just sang them to a sort of guess of a tune and then he had whatsapp messaged him a voice message and he then added the music in so uh, that gives you a flavor of what kind of quality to expect um trent when you're ready will you uh play us the tune and uh let's all listen in it's the saturday night quarantine show you watch it on your laptop or maybe your phone we tell jokes and you laugh at home Uh or maybe you don't but we'll We'll never never know know. there's luke Luke, who's grumpy and very mustachy josie who's smiley and lots of laughy johnny and the baptist are the best we all agree and two to three guests of varying quality the best show on the internet without a doubt you might as well watch it you can't go out it's the saturday night quarantine show sponsored by no one so please give us cash on the thing okay um so um that's that's the theme tune um can oh. I say I'm surprised pleasantly by how good that is? I, I, I think of it as very much the new EastEnders mm. theme tune. You know, uh, uh, something people will really get behind yeah. and remember for a long time. Can, next time we do it, can we, we zo- do it? Can we zoom into a map of um, <laughs> empty London? Empty London, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what I was just reminded of. When I was about three at a, and a play, play group, I was just reminded of a very early memory, which is just of me finding any excuse to, like, perform for no reason. Mm. Um, at play group, there was a, a little boy who, who was very sad. And I said to him, why are you sad? And he said, I miss my mummy. And I said, does your mummy like to sing? Does she... And then I sang the whole of the Anita Dobson, Anyone Can Fall In. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was like. Wait, wait, wait. So what? You've not the story. Did it work? Was he cheered? <laughs> he literally was like, no. Mm. No, that's not what she's like at all. It was like a bad psychic. But we got together in the end. <laughs> 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 lovely, okay. lovely. Good. Well, we're having a nice time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I just just say uh, I know I've, got, I've had a couple of messages. Um, uh, my sister said mm-hmm. this is very funny. I don't know if you remember last week. She said it was quite funny. Oh, that's so, good. good. Step up. That's an upgrade. And um, and my friend Viv says I did worry that Josie was implying that you'd voted for Keir Starmer. So I'm very glad you cleared that up. So so far, a lot of positivity. <laughs> Right. Um, I'm just uh, how are you, Paddy? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm okay, thank. You. It, it, it's been a, a long, a long. I'm, I'm rushing back and forth, doing lots of things. Um, but I'm, this is the best. Once again, this is the best day of my. This is the best evening of my week. I love doing this. Oh, your <laughs> lines. Was if this day was a week right now would mm. be your 
okay. I think that's what you meant to say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right. And I also voted for Keir Star. Oh no, there's another right. political <laughs> take. Here. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, no. that's my brother's I'm... cousin. He also yes. thinks that coronavirus is caused by 5G. So don't <laughs> listen to him. It's yes. like the luxury of being a pig. Yes, absolutely. I, I'm going to go off and insult some people that don't deserve it now. Go, goodbye. <laughs> burrow, 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 burrow. Well, That's... that was a sad interlude, wasn't it? Interlude, wasn't it? That was very sad. General. Uh, where are all the pigs in, your? The pigs in uh, your house? Yes, Luke, why don't you explain that to us? But the pigs in my house? The pigs... Yes. Oh, I have no pigs. Oh, that's a sad state oh. of affairs. I know, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I could lie to you, but... Um, if anyone? Oh yes, anyone... there's a right back here. I've got a pig over. It's behind the camera, but he's definitely there. Thanks to anyone still watching this. Now we um, we've got some really really wonderful guests. I'm so thrilled that we've managed to get the bill that we have today. I'm really excited. About, I'm really excited about it. Can I introduce the first of them, Luke? Yes, please do. Well, I shall. Um, the first guest has been such a joy during this difficult time. Every single day, she's doing something so utterly inventive and beautiful and creative on her Instagram and her Instagram Live that it makes my heart uh, happy and relieved and joyous. And from a stream that she's currently hosting, just for a few minutes so that we can have her as part of our stream um she's absolutely wonderful please everybody welcome alison spit oh. hi hi how are you um, oh, i'm very right. very excited to be here um yeah i, I suppose yeah I'm, I'm flying solo now for the the five minutes and uh yeah it's daunting it's daunting because being a comedian oh. in lockdown um i i really kind of I've gone back to my old life as a teenager. I stay in my bedroom a lot. Also, um, I haven't heard the question, uh, do you have a webcam as much as before when I was 13? And I used to go in chat rooms. So it's nice to be back in this again. Um, I Because my boyfriend has got uh, the COVID, I have to stay in a lot. And I found myself... Um, kind of becoming very attached to the pigeons that live on my balcony. But um, I share my balcony with um, children and they're throwing sticks at the pigeons. And I want to tell the children to stop. But also, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know how to defend a pigeon. So it's very difficult. Um, I'm going to tell you a story about The Sims. It's a game I used to love to play when I was uh, younger. And now it's aggressively advertised to me uh, during this lockdown. And um, the reason why I gave up The Sims was because I was way too addicted. And also um, I inflicted all of my psychological problems on The Sims themselves. So I'll tell you this story uh, about um, this guy. And the hard thing about doing um, comedy on on a webcam is I can't libel anyone. I mean, one of the big reasons why I started doing stand-up comedy was to libel people to small amounts of people. So, you know, it, it wouldn't matter. So I'm going to change the names, but I have this childhood enemy. Um, for, for the sake of this, I'm going to call him Benjamin Netanyahu. And um, Benjamin Netanyahu used to call me fat the whole time uh, in school, which is like oh, very, very bad. And, what I used to do to try and get revenge on him um, was I used to play The Sims and I made up Benjamin's life in The Sims. Um, it was the exact same type of house. It had like a semi-detached house with um, his both his parents and his four brothers and sisters ranging from the age of four to 18. And um, I, would, I would play the long game. I, I'd spend months cultivating these Sims. I'd make them love each other. They'd have their own personality traits. Uh, it would be beautiful. They would share some really tender moments. And then um, when Benjamin would call me fat for the last time, I went back to The Sims, I pressed play, and I built a really, really big swimming pool in the back garden. And then I put all of his family in the swimming pool. That's uh, his four brothers and sisters, his parents. But I'd make Benjamin stand outside and watch. And then I would take away that ladder. Now, if you've played The Sims, you know that it would take Roughly about 40 minutes for a sim to drown uh, in a swimming pool with no ladder. Uh, but 
I used to fast forward for that because I'm not a psychopath. I was just a hurt girl. <laughs> I took no pleasure in it. I took a lot of pleasure in it, actually. Um, yeah, also, what, what else did I tell you? Um, oh, I'll tell you. Do, do you know what? I'll tell you the story, the first ever story that I told um, doing stand-up comedy. So it's not the best, but it's the first one, and it's about my gran. Um, my gran is a lovely woman I can't libel her she's a lovely woman so she's just really really lovely with no social issues at all but uh she does like a drink uh in a nice way and uh me and my cousins once my my granddad he's a bit of a wheeler dealer and he brought back a um hot tub back to our house and uh we'd never had luxury before and um, we didn't know what to do with it. So we just put all the Jack Russells in it because my granddad being a wheeler dealer would also get a massive amount of Jack Russells just free with every car. They were like happy meal toys. So we put them in the <laughs> we put them in the in the um hot tub and we put it on spin or whatever. And they had a great time. Um especially because the jets were going so mad and you didn't know whether the dogs wanted to frost or swim at the same time. There was definitely a battle going on in their heads. But we took out the Jack Russells and they're all clean. And uh, we went into it ourselves because we thought it's a waste of hot water. So it was me, my nan and my um, two cousins in this uh, hot tub. The glamour, absolute glamour. And we were all about 15 and 17 at, at that time. So we couldn't buy our own alcohol, but we were allowed a few beers. And I remember my nan kept drinking all of the beer. And eventually we had a plan between us. And we said to my nan, nan, if you drink uh this beer through a straw you'll get drunker quicker and it'll be better and uh she was fully on board with this and she put the straw into the beer and she got so drunk that her arms just stopped working and it just went up in the jets so she looked like she was praising jesus or something and eventually we just took away the bottle and left the straw in her mouth and just the straw in the water so my gran was drinking hot tub water for a good hour and uh yeah, and normally in this set I'll go into something about the IRA, but I feel it's not the place. So, <laughs> so thank you. I don't know how that was, but it's done. So thank you so much for having me. I hope you have a lovely evening. And best of luck. Thank you. It's wonderful. Oh. Here. It's wonderful. Here. Very it's sweet. really funny. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, so you're right. It feels so odd to be thinking, gosh, this is something I'm putting out into the ether that will last probably longer than I will on this earth and be seen by like too many people. I really better like slow down the libels, which again is one of the most fun things about going to a live comedy show. It's really so disposable in a way yeah. that you can make really mad stuff. <laughs> yeah. And what are you watching today in your K video party? Today, I've got people voting and we vote, they voted for Annie. Uh, which I'm going to go to try and dress up as Annie now. I'm looking for <laughs> some sort of orf to wear. I sort of remember just with that film when I was a kid. And then there yeah. were two different productions of Annie that I auditioned for as a child. And all I wanted was to play an orphan, a prominent orphan. And I was told one, yes. that I looked too well fed to play an orphan. And I was reduced to playing, like, waiting stuff. It's not that now, like childhood obesity is a sign of poverty as well. I mean, I grew up in a castle. I was very fat. Like, you know. <laughs> I was a uncle. Yep. 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 Sorry? Encore. encore, the thing on Disney Plus. Yes, it's brilliant. I yes, I I'm I yes. That's the only reason why I got Rista Cats. It's um, got to describe it to me. <laughs> it's well, um, it's like, uh, you yes. describe it. No, no, you go ahead, Alison. You go ahead. So it's like a reality TV show where um, fam uh, a class, so a class that graduated in 1991 who did a production of Annie or um, Annie Get Your Gun or any type of musical, they get back together from their adult lives and then recreate uh, the musical. So it's beautiful. I mean, I did a few musicals when I was a kid. I did like um, South, South Pacific. Um, and I got really angry because I auditioned for the part of, um, what's her name? It's not Widow Twanky, but she's a character. Twanky, she's an older woman. She's a character actors. that I really wanted. Yeah. And uh, I had a proper row with someone the second night of the play. 
because I wrote on a blackboard, Oklahoma was better, which was the last year's production. <laughs> the guy had a more prominent part in. <laughs> That's why we were all comedians, because we were slighted during our school's musical theatre productions. Mm, theatre productions. Mm, and we were revenging. I, I played um, the Beadle in Sweeney Todd. Amazing. A little beetle. <laughs> Attend the tale of Sweeney Todd. His face is filled, he's got a swab. His kind of a cinema, Hannibal Shoe, his Hannibal Bath, and then a shoe. And you can know still, the, remember, I still remember all the words. I still remember all the words. I didn't know Luke, there was a beetle in it. It is like muscle memory. What, what do you mean you didn't know there was a beetle? It's a very important role. What, you, there's a little, there's a little, the little cuddly dog singing all those songs. They're not a beetle. Songs. They're not a beetle. A beetle. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so encore is about people restaging it's childhood great. musicals. It's yeah, it's, and it's surprising. Yeah. It's like oh, it's. I think everything is surprising though. I mean, literally, I've been crying at pigeons. Like, oh. or I my put friend on... sent a picture of him as a baby into a WhatsApp group, and I just cried my eyes out and I was like you're a baby and you haven't seen what's going to happen <laughs> <laughs> I was putting on um, uh, those uh, an, or- uh, there's, uh, an orchestra in um, the Netherlands that did a remote performance via Zoom and they joined and they're playing Ode to Joy and it was so beautiful and I was playing it for my daughter and I was thinking to myself this is really really important for her and I was crying and my, my daughter just got, started going not this not this. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Not this. Oh, like, right. Philistine. Philistine. Peppa Pig theme tune. I'm sure she'd be fine with it. I'm sure. It's like an orchestra. Yeah, she's into that. She'll sing that. And she started to sing that. And she started singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star and Into mm-hmm. Into Spider. So her repertoire is it's quite broad. There's something for everyone, you know, <laughs> when, she gigs, when she gigs. And what kind of music do you, do you like? Oh, you know, all sorts, very broad tastes. <laughs> um, we should um, say thank you very much to Alison Spittle. Yes, thank you. Yes. Enjoy the watching party. Have a lovely Featuring, of course, Tim Curry, one of the most underrated Rated. actors of all time. Yes, Come that's on. me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, Tim Curry's amazing. And I'm very, I'm <laughs> very go. excited. But have a wonderful evening. But have a wonderful evening. Bye. I love, thank you. Tim Curry, of course, had a long partnership with Tim Rice. Yes, please. I actually get them confused whenever anyone says either like, the name. I think, which one's that? Is that the artist <laughs> or is that the um, the, the one factor? Um, it's worth saying at this point that you can tip during this show at cosmicshambles.com forward slash stay at home. Um, yes. And that money and, goes and to also- venues who don't who aren't doing other work because there isn't any. Yeah, all of us, uh, it's so yeah. weird. Like, I, I look through my diary. I keep picking up my diary and being like, no, no, <laughs> this is a work of fiction. This is not <laughs> real. Some, some is fictional to read. Diary. <laughs> like Oscar Wilde. But it's um, well, now the next act is you, Josie. Yes. Wait, what's the, where do you send money to? You're Cosmic you Shambles. Do you send the money? Oh, <laughs> Cosmic uh, com slash stay, slash stay at, at home. Yes. And what? How much would you recommend everyone gives? I would say ten pounds. Hello. <laughs> say they... It's my bit now. You don't need to give anything. Or, oh, but if but you do, do, you know, sliding scale. Heard of a beer, and it's my time to speak. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll please welcome to stay on the stage. Wait, please welcome to staying on screen, <laughs> Joe Song! Hello. It's so nice to be here. I really, really am missing performing so much. I hope you're all well. Um, I uh, It's a very funny day. I've had a bit of an emotional day today. Um, and also somebody was saying, um, you know, it's a very funny thing to be like, oh, Johnny's gone to the fridge. I hope you can see that. <laughs> it's a very funny thing to have been sort of wishing for there to be other things to think about and talk about than the um, horrific pandemic. And then being like, I didn't really, really want to have to talk about the Labour leadership race. <laughs> um, but it's it's a very sort of strange, sad day for someone like me because I'm a socialist and I would have loved to have seen a socialist candidate get in and not somebody who does not... Uh, 
advocate uh, you know what I'm trying to say I've had a fair bit um and it's a really and I if you share my politics I just want you to know that you're not alone and I hope you're okay basically because it's hard times to be a socialist at the moment it is and I feel like it's all been such a roller coaster because 10 years ago no one was a socialist there was me there was Diane Abbott and there was Billy Bragg sometimes <laughs> the three of us would go to all the meetings and agree with each other it was beautiful and then what happened suddenly we're flying high and I thought it would never end I thought we were here and we'd arrived and now we're back down in the trough I feel like how it must feel to have been a member of a new metal band you know, <laughs> no one liked him everyone thought they wouldn't get anywhere then suddenly number one's across the world and they're thinking it will never be over now I feel like Fred Durst. And the worst part is whenever I say his name, I worry that I've actually confused him with the very wealthy murderer. So it's a funny time. And um, it's hard, I think, in this country, if you are somebody who is trying to advocate for change, if you're a socialist, I think this country is very cruel to its socialists. And sometimes it can feel like you're born, you live, you fight and you die on the losing team. And every day you get kicked for it. And every day you get called elite for it. Um, it's been very odd because I've been told so many times that I live in an ivory tower. Being in lockdown has been a bit of a shock. I don't even have a dishwasher. <laughs> they lie to me. But I am very proud to be a socialist. And I think in times like this, you have to take heart from the beautiful socialist tradition. We come from a glorious socialist tradition. Hundreds of years of struggle. We come from a glorious, proud socialist tradition. And we must take heart. And I remember Jeremy Corbyn reading a beautiful quote from uh, the poet Victor Jara about um how you can cut all the flowers but you can't stop spring from coming and you must take heart from the socialist tradition but if i were to give you one piece of advice it would be don't research anything other than superficially as to what happens to socialists in the socialist tradition like don't go further than like oh wow and they were free the dictator great like don't like don't read into what happened after the americans showed up okay don't read into what happened you know because it, what I'm saying is it will harsh your buzz as a socialist to look at any further into just right in front of us right now. And, you know, it's not happened to me. I was like, oh, wow, I want to learn all about Salvador Allende. I, I want to learn all about these amazing. Oh, oh, um, mm, mm. oh, is that what? Oh, OK. <laughs> oh, in the, uh, in the football stadium, is it? <laughs> oh, uh, Colonia Dignidad, was it? Hey, what that is a thing to Wikipedia. Can't believe it. Um, I had other things that I wanted to talk about. Um, I am. I tell you what is making me happy: the fact that we are all so dealing with such stark and difficult events has really shut up some of the people who were spending their lives stoking a culture war about whether or not you can joke anymore. Um, it's been absolutely thrilled to see them rendered largely obsolete. It's delightful. And I'm glad because I was starting to just get so exhausted of the new culture wars. And they really made me yearn for the old culture wars from the 1980s. Like I kept thinking about the fact that my dream these days it would be for a question time panel just to be Jim Bowen and Bobby Davro and then them saying I, t I tell you what alternative comedy alternative to comedy more like that's what I would dream of as opposed to uh, people sat on a panel called should jokes be woke um, so yeah I miss the old culture wars <laughs> I got a bit big I'm trying to write a bit at the moment about how delightful it is to see that if you give people an app called next door they'll become their own cops um, just because I joined next door the app thinking it was so cute and then all it was was people being like you must report your housemates your housemates are intending on having fun during this time you must report them if you do not I will report them <laughs> and I was like goodbye no alerts <laughs> Um, yeah oh I'll tell you one last thing before I pass over uh, to uh, the uh, the next guest who I should say is a new guest that we've never had before and a very exciting guest because she hails from the world of fiction but before I say that I want to tell you something suitably uh, good to warm up for her because the other night my daughter woke up in the middle of the night and um, 
her nappy had uh, split she'd got wet on her clothes so i had to say to her you're a wet betty um which she doesn't her name's not betty so she always goes my name's not betty which is ever so cute and i had to change her and as i was changing her i was in her bedroom and let's say we were facing here and there was a door open like this um with a light on in the hallway because i needed to take all the wet clothes and put them in the other room and go and get a nappy for her and as i was changing her she was looking out at the door and she said to me Mummy, there's a man. And I was like, what do you mean? I looked round. There's not a man, baby. Yes, mummy. A man. Where? There. What does he look like? A man. A man. So I haven't slept and I shall never sleep again <laughs> because my flat is obviously wildly haunted. Now, what I would like to do now, everybody watching, is to introduce you onto the stage. We're so lucky to have her from the world of folklore. It is a horrible and terrible old crone. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome old crone. Yes, yes, terrible old crone. Nobody you ought to read. Don't like it up. I'm terrible old crone. <laughs> Hello, Josie Long. Terrible old crone here. I've just crawled out of me hole and come up to meet you. How are oh, you? Are you isolating in the hole? Well, I've got to self-isolate. It's, it's responsible for self-isolating, you little old. So I'm staying <laughs> in me hole and I'm making good use of the time, Josie. Making good use of the time. I'm, um, I've been doing some... Um, do, do, doing it, do it up yourself. I've been doing some of that decorating lot. Do it up yourself. So I've been doing <laughs> it up myself and doing all sorts of things in my hole. I've put some... Um, I've put some wallpaper up in my hole. I've put some <laughs> shelves right up in my hole. I've put some, um, I've, what haven't I put? I've put everything up in my hole. I've put a spice rack up in my hole. <laughs> it really is the old school. Sorry? Nothing, nothing, crone, nothing. Please continue. Tell them out, crone. Well, so I've, I've done all that, and um, it's much nicer place to be, my hole, now. I'd recommend anyone who wants a visit to come round and stick your nose in. <laughs> 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 well, Crow, we spent all this talking about your hole, but what we haven't been mentioned is the fact that a number of people have been very rude to you on Twitter. Yes, horrible little munchkins, munchkins, stibbling around and saying knobbly old things to a nastily old, wonderful little old woman like me, just a poor little lady with bad rickets. You can't oh, see the rickets that's sad. under the table. Well, that's, that's the best thing for best them. Best thing I've for heard. them, I've heard. Would you? I mean, I don't want to uh, pour salt in any old wounds here, but if I were to name some of these people who've insulted you and okay. and reiterate the insults, uh, do you feel that it would be appropriate to curse them? Oh yes, I love to curse people when they've done me wrong. You cross the crown, you get a bone picked. I've done better, but you know it's all right. I see, a, I see a, it's very gnomic. It's gnomic, crone. Okay. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> Don't we them? I just don't understand. See, the crone can hear the G. The crone can hear the G. Okay. Well. So, Tony, Tony Gowland. Gowland on Twitter has said that he heard that terrible old crone's favourite character in Friends is Ross. Oh, spreading these rumours about me, Paul and I'm in. Oh, Tony, Tony Rowland, did you say? Tony what? Tony, Tony. Gowland. What is Gowland? Well, may I say to you, Tony, may ye grow a second bottom in your <laughs> bottom. So you have to shit twice. <laughs> Terrible old crow. What an awful old crow. Double as long, double the pong. <laughs> Uh, that, and that weirdly was the name of my Edinburgh show that I had to cancel. Uh, um, John Chambers has said, I heard that the terrible old crone's favourite Star Trek theme is Faith of the Harm Enterprise. Well, may I say to you, may <laughs> ye begin to understand Steve Bell cartoons, but stop understanding Everything else. <laughs> <laughs> the only way, of course. <laughs> now, Robert Wells has said he heard, heard that the terrible old crone goes out at night repainting shop signs so that they have extra green grocer's apostrophe. Extra well, apostrophe. Well, Robert Wells sounds like quite the old pedant. He's got it up him, hasn't he? He doesn't <laughs> like apostrophes or commas used wrong. Well, I'll say to him, may he find Robert Wells 
whenever ye go to a pantomime and everyone else shouts out, it's behind you, or, oh, no, it isn't, may you find yourself shouting out instead of that, questions people usually say at RSC post-show Q&As. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be shouting out and you we say it's more of a statement than a question really but i've always thought this play was an existentialist comment on orientalism and would the cast agree but not that member of the cast on the end i think she looks thick or you shout out oh i'd just like to say i haven't been touched by a bottom since you or since olivia always end on the base one. all right how many more have we got? We've got more we've got more yes we've got uh, well one two three four Oh, and there's some with offensive content. <laughs> oh, this is adorable. This is adorable. Okay, I'm going to tell you the one that's offensive later. Okay, another one. I heard that the terrible old crone always offers you a cup of tea, but never actually makes Oh, one. it is offensive. It's terrible offensive, right. Well, may ye find yourself playing a game of famous, arti famous artists' top trumps, and you've drawn Van Gogh, and you're feeling like, oh, this is good, he's very well, he's, he scores pretty highly on everything. And then the other person picks, and the topic is number of ears. Terrible, <laughs> <laughs> you've lost. <laughs> Poor old Van Gogh. Okay, crone. I didn't do it. Mary Liz has said that she heard that the terrible old crone always gets people's names slightly wrong, even after they've corrected her. Well, Mary, may ye discover that whenever ye get aroused, your genitals turn into some sort of vegetable. <laughs> Johnny McBob... by rabbits. Johnny McBob says, I heard the terrible old crone whistles Saturday Night by Wigfield over the top of whatever song is playing, regardless. Well, it's true. I don't really see how it's uh, how it's an insult, but all right, here we go. Is a curse. May ye go to a homeware store and pick up every blender on sale and see if your bottom will fit inside. And then when <laughs> when they come over and they say, "Could you stop doing that, please?" and you say, "Well, how am I meant to know if my bottom fits in it if I don't?" And they say, why do you want to fit your bottom in it? And you say, because I want to blend my bottom. And they say, well, you can't blend your bottom. And you say, well, it will take ages to do it with a little knife. <laughs> <laughs> well, Crone, it's been delightful. And um, I'm afraid we're going to have to end. Um, I'm afraid we're going to have to end the cursing there. But I would like to say that Richard Cook's insult, which was only you are loathsome, comma, Crone, exclamation mark, was hidden by Twitter for being offensive. And I find that very sweet, considering they can't hide oh, actual me. Nazis. May Sorry? ye find yourself, may ye find a tiny version of you who entirely refuses to address the situation. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now, <laughs> thank you to the crone. Unfortunately, Luke wasn't around to see that. That would have been exactly his cup of tea, but that's life. Um, I am really thrilled because the last guest we have on tonight is all the way over the Atlantic Ocean um and a dear oh yeah see there he is he's, <laughs> i don't know what he's doing but we shall find out soon hey. everybody please welcome it's edelman hello hey how are how you, you me? yes loud and clear I'm well. I'm well i'm well i'm well i'm well i'm well <laughs> um john luke roberts you just missed the most fabulous old crone Oh, no, I always miss the terrible old crone. It's very sad for me. I was just <laughs> off um, wiping my hair. Oh, well, important. A very important government-mandated activity. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise... You're, um, wiping your, you're wiping your hair, were you? Yeah, wiping my hair. Yeah, you've got a... Uh, I haven't got any shampoo left, but, you, you know, a flannel every now and then never goes amiss. That's the that's <laughs> on the posters, isn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'm so happy to hear that um, that people have been relieved of uh, the pressures of their poster filing deadlines for the Edinburgh <laughs> Fringe Festival. Um, I, thought, I, thought the, I thought the method for that was a bit severe, but, you know, I'm, I'm holding up the best. Hi, Johnny! I'm holding up the best I can here. I've got my own mask. I've got my own construction workers mask. Um, I, uh, my, I, I'm currently quarantining in the bedroom, uh, the the bedroom, the spare bedroom at my parents' home, because when I was a kid, they bought a zebra patterned, um, headboard <laughs> curtain set for my little brother's bedroom, and he wouldn't even talk to them. So, uh, to get good value, they moved the zebra pattern to the, um, spare bedroom. 
So now I have to look at zebra. Ze- sorry, zebra all the time. Thank you for translating. Thank you. Yeah. I Who is Bobby Davro? What is a panto? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what a panto is. Seriously. You don't know what a panto is. Seriously. You know what a panto is. You know I what? A panto a pantomime. Yeah. Yeah. I was at I was it's at slang cro- for pants. I was at, I was at the Hoth in Crawley, not to brag. And <laughs> there was a and there was a stand up poster for someone named Jethro. And just for looking at the poster, I knew everything about him. <laughs> sort of explanation. And you got up close to the poster. He's wearing a black shirt, but he had a bit of a toothpaste stain that no one had bothered to Photoshop out of the shirt. And I'm just like, this guy probably gets up there and he tells it like it is. And asks questions about why we need sugar free fudge. And like, you know. You know. But um, I'm isolated, and I'm not productive, and I'm getting very annoyed with all the people tweeting, like, you know, in quarantine, Shakespeare, Shakespeare wrote King Lear. And I'm like, I can't even read King Lear in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> and also, did Shakespeare have a PlayStation 4? Because if Shakespeare had a PlayStation 4, he would not have written King Lear, and PlayStation 4 is better than King Lear. And I know, because I have... King Lear and PlayStation 4 in the same room. And one of them I've opened up 60 times. <laughs> and the other is King Lear. So, I'm sad. Is there a delay? Can you hear me? I'm, I'm not sure if any of this is coming oh, through. We can. We're loving it, but we're leaving you to perform and we're muting ourselves so that everyone gets to enjoy you doing the set, okay? Uh, oh, I didn't know. I thought it was I thought it was a terrible load crone type situation where everyone... Oh, but we can... But whatever you like, like we'd like. Fine, fine, fine. Let me no. Let me perform. I've written some jokes, but I've had no one to tell them to. So, and some of them are quite <laughs> America specific. So I'm going to read through five of them, and then I'm going to leave you alone. So the first one is: um, I love how some teams in the United States are named after regional things that will kill you. Uh, sports teams like the Florida Gators. Um, uh, the Florida Florida has the Gators. The Miami have the heat, the Colorado have the avalanche, and that's it. You run out. That's the end of the premise. You run out of everything after after those four examples. Some teams would have to move from their specific locales to other locales to make them dangerous. Like if the Brooklyn Cyclones, uh, a baseball team in Brooklyn, moved uh, to Kansas, it'd be quite offensive. And if the Minnesota Vikings moved to England in the 11th century, it would also be quite offensive. If that was century, they would struggle to get a fixture. <laughs> is that right? Were there when, when were they when were when were there Vikings in the UK? This is yeah, the they were, about right, I think. Uh, around the fifth to the ninth century. No, because no, fifth to the fifth to the tenth. No, to the eleventh, because ten sixty six. One of them was guys coming over from. Were they proper Vikings? Uh, possibly not. Okay, thanks. This is time. Perfect. Six months from now, I will, when I get to perform these jokes live for the first time, I do want historical verisimilitude. So I appreciate that. Um, I uh, I uh, I have this new app on my phone that records whenever I, I talk. So I have a word count for the day that I have to get to because I'm by myself. And the word count the other day was four because I uh, I didn't get I didn't speak all day. And then uh, I, I didn't remember having had a conversation with anyone, so I went into the files on uh, on Talk Draft, which is the name of the app, to to hear the words that I had spoken. And uh, the four words that I had spoken was, "We're doing okay." That's it. That's all I said. I, at some point during the day, I just went, "We're we're doing okay." And uh, it was nice of them to spot me the extra word. Um, I've been using my phone. Uh, my phone usage uh, this week has plummeted to 22 hours a day. I am using my phone nonstop. I am FaceTiming people I have spoken to once or never. Um, I had a FaceTime phone call the other day with uh, my mom is in this house and occasionally we'll stand six or six feet or so from each other and chat. My mother FaceTimed, was FaceTiming with a friend and she's like, Alex, come over here and meet Rebecca. And I was like, fine. And I came over 
And Rebecca went, oh, you look exactly like your mother. And I was like, exactly? I sure hope not, because this arm hair situation is barely acceptable on me. All right, we'll do one more. Thank you for thoughtfully indulging this. And uh, I hope everyone who is watching uh, is doing okay, as it is. Uh, we're all doing okay, aren't we? We're all doing our best. Um, there's so much gold. I'm really not quite sure. Uh, I'm really not quite sure which one to which one to end with. Mm, what will we talk about other than this? Is there anything here that's not that's not related to this coronavirus? Oh yes, yes. Um, shortly, uh, shortly before I left, uh, I left London. I was on the tube, and these two people were arguing. Uh, and it became clear that they were two, uh, like, slam poets who were rivals of each other, who had run into each other on the tube. And it was clearly one of the moments of highest drama for these people that's, like, a moment they'll remember for the rest of their lives. And we were just bystanders, like, watching this moment of... High and I just had this vision of, like, one person in a climactic movie scene, like one guy whose like sister dragged him to see Rocky fight Apollo Creed in the second movie, and he's like, I don't really care for boxing. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's pretty savage and should be illegal. And they're like, well, it's a pretty big deal. And they're like, wait, so who are we rooting for? And they're like, well, if, if you take into account the complicated race relations with Philadelphia, probably Apollo Creed. But if you're following the narrative, probably Rocky. And he's like. How much are popcorns? That's it. That's all I got. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, <laughs> thank you for coming. Uh, so nice. This is very so impressive. Awesome. This is very impressive joke writing for given that most comedians I know's uh, response to this has just been this and this <laughs> and nothing else. Oh, no, I'm so scared. I'm very I'm really, impressed. Really, really <laughs> If anyone has any jokes or premises or wants to tweet their laughter at me, I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Watson's been getting this couple of various things. If you would like to tweet the clap sign at any of us, that would be appreciated. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. Um, bye, definitely. Um, bye. Um, we've got the photo. Alex, before you go, he's gone. Um, we, um, my, my friend Viv sent this. That's the picture of That's the picture of Jethro. That's the picture of Jethro. And if you look he's, very uh, high lit where the, the stain is. So that's, uh, he's not just funny, he's truthful. Truthful? I just burped and I forgot that I was being mic'd up. So that is very normal, like I do often on stage. Yeah, that's normally, that's, that's normally, about, that's 15 about, 15 minutes, that's normally about 15 minutes in, isn't it? And then you... <laughs> or it's five minutes from the end where I'm trying to make a serious point. Mm. Luke, we've got a week until our next show. Shall yes. we set each other a challenge or shall we ask for audience input or anything yeah. like that? A challenge, a creative challenge? Yes. Well, you can't really go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, the challenge well, is. Don't they give us characters to play, to play, and we can interview each other in those characters? <gasps> yes, I would absolutely. Denzel agree. Washington. No. As I John, say, the okay. audience are good suggestions. The only reason we let Johnny on stage is so he's not allowed to make audience suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a lovely time. <laughs> um, um, now, I'd like to start at 7.30 p.m. next week. Are we? Uh, are we? Yeah. Well, did we not dis we discuss that, didn't we? We I thought, did not discuss it. It's going to be tricky baby with us. not go to sleep until 8 o'clock. <laughs> we won't be doing that. We had it in a WhatsApp group chat, which it turns out... Trent and I had a discussion without anyone else. Had a discussion without anyone else reading the discussion that we'd had, and um, I thought signed off on it. Um, a WhatsApp group chat about this show that Paddy and Josie and I are not in. I'm in the WhatsApp group, but as it's clearly shown, I haven't paid enough attention to it. Paddy is furious. <laughs> Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily for you both, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's time to throw to you so you can have your revenge through the medium of song. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. Um, back. Back. Have, we have had a wonderful hour. Oh, um, yeah. I think we've all learned a little something. Um, we thought we'd finish with a little song um, where, um, uh, which. You, would you dress up while I explain I the song? Yeah, you, you go for it. I'll find some props. So um, there's a lot of um, 
conflicting guidance from the government at the moment. Um, and so we thought we would put to music uh, what the actual position is uh, by the current uh, UK government on what you should do during the pandemic. Um, Paddy, uh, drop me a beat. Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um... Okay, are you ready? A little quieter. <laughs> Whoa! Oh yeah, let's rain it in. <laughs> Not too loud. <laughs> How's that for you? Well, I don't want to sing too loud. If I wake up my daughter, my evening will be ruined. So. Okay, like, like, I'm going to move my chair back. <laughs> if you go a bit further, imagine you're social distancing from the microphone. Okay, and I'm going to play away from the mic. How's this? That's great. That's great. Oh, well, this sounds good. I can't, yeah. So, no, I've lost. Oh, there we go. Right, I got it. Oh, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Sing along at home when you're ready. Mm. Mm -mm. Getting too close to the stove. That's dangerous. Playing with the flame. That's Dangerous. Putting things into your ear. That's dangerous. Joining an insurgency. That is dangerous. Eating all the jam. That's dangerous. Eating jam around some wasps. That's dangerous. Running at the wasp, shouting, I am a jam monster. Fear me, wasps. <laughs> That's dangerous. That is dangerous. Putting books into the toaster. That's Dangerous. Pulling the cat's tail. That's dangerous. Often shitting blood. That's dangerous. <laughs> Any kind of glue. That is dangerous. Testing father's patience. That's dangerous. Talking back to father. That's dangerous. Letting father see your fear. That's Dangerous. Telling the police. That is dangerous. Looking down a hose. That's dangerous. Standing on a rake. That's dangerous. Running with a gun. That's dangerous. Not checking out that lump. That is dangerous. Synthesizing crystal meth. That's dangerous. <laughs> Undercutting local dealers. That's Dangerous. Not hiring due protection. That's dangerous. Hiding in the cold shed. Really need to sneeze. They are gonna hear me. This is how it ends. Mic drop. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, we call mic drop unmute on this. <laughs> oh, fuck, all right. <laughs> what is um, I'm just... Oh, uh, the first uh, suggestion next week is just cartoon characters not specific enough whoever suggested, whoever suggested that? that we no. need yes. true specifics we could live animate the show we could <laughs> with we a could. pen <laughs> uh, look we, we should go before the stream goes all bad yes. but let's do, do, do. Okay, okay firstly thank you to trent who's put all this together and who yes, is doing, is doing about 15 shows a day to support us all and he's just been brilliant thank you trent um and, and talking about those shows, they're on all week. Two science shows two. tomorrow, one at 3 p.m., one at 7 p.m. Um, then there's the morning show, which you host with Robin, don't you, Josie? That's every day at 10 well, a.m. I, I would say Robin hosts with me. I'm very much the uh, enthusiastic uh, fern to his to his feel. Good. Oh, uh, Holly. Oh, yeah, Holly, sorry. But I'm more of a fern, let's be real. Wait, Philip, only people named after plants. Yes. Holly. Yeah. Fern, cactus, Rose. it's amazing. <laughs> um, Stinging. Uh, loads of great guests on next week. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, um, who have we got? Oh, Pink who? Panther and Morph. Both of those don't really speak. I, I would, I would like... Oh. Uh, what I'd like is I'd like something like, um, like an angry firefighter or a kind dentist. If you give us those... Yes, yes, that's yes. Really yes. Yeah. An insight into character and also something to play with. Play an, ex with. an excitable Mormon. Yes, great. Although there's a whole musical of that. Okay. A phantom who like. loves opera. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
We've got loads of great shows on. Yeah. Um, also, we do have the tip cup if, tip people, cup if people do support, feel like supporting us. Basically, we've all lost all our work and we're trying to do our best under the circumstances and also lots of venues which are already kind of on the breadliner. Who's, on the, who's on the show next week? Ooh, lots of people. Um, Tim Minchin, Deb Francis White, Izzy Sutty, Russell Kane, Joe Neary, Matt Parker, Polly Sampson, Ellipsis, which means more people. I think yep. the okay. actual, well, it's it'd be great well, if you could get have... this on as a guest because <laughs> you've never heard the ellipsis's side of the story. They're very <laughs> reticent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're all very proud of you. <laughs> uh, as well, um, which has allowed all this to happen, that's patreon.com forward slash book shambles. Yep. Uh, um, yes. And there's a Patreon only show on Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. That's me. me and Robin and Grace Petrie. Um, we're going to have a really lovely, fun time for all the people who've been supporting us on Patreon. I'm really looking forward to it. The three of us have toured quite a lot together and we just love hanging out with each other. And so that'll be really fun and really exciting to get to do. And next week, we're going to record a new version of the theme tune. Um, uh, okay. With slightly lower quality. Okay, Ooh. great. Great. I'm glad. <laughs> and and I, I liked the theme tune as it was. Um, thanks, between man. now and next week we're all going to learn, learn a language but we're all going to learn a different language from each other and then we're all going to conduct a horrific conversation alright yeah. <laughs> yes okay. it's, well that's what's going to happen <laughs> uh, another suggestion Roland Rat but he's just won the lottery hooray oh. Rat I've won the little gear. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. <laughs> this is like the best improv show I've ever seen. <laughs> we still on. Yeah, we should go. Yeah, we should call it. Thank you, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed it's the show. Been it's been, pleasure. yeah, it's really Sorry. exciting for us to get to do anything. And yeah, yeah. thanks. Oh.